All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our celebrity guest series every Wednesday for D represented by DC Scores. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for coming and being a part of this wonderful experience. We have some amazing celebrities from DC United that's going to be here with us talking about some really meaningful and fun things. And hopefully y'all are going to all learn from them and get some best tips and tricks on life goals, life skills, soccer skills, and just a lot of different things in general. So we're really happy to have them here. But before we get started, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. For those of you who have been at our celebrity guest series over the summer, you kind of know what I'm about to talk about, which is the chat room. All of y'all, just to let you know, the chat is open for anyone to talk to discuss what we're talking about and to engage. We wanna keep it open and leave it that way because we wanna make sure that y'all feel that your voices are heard and that you can interact with our guests. Also at the end of our interview, we're gonna open up the floor for any questions. There is a way that you can submit a question at the bottom of your screen where it says Q and A, you can actually type a question to DC scores and then they'll give me the questions to ask our wonderful guests here today. But what I do ask for y'all to do is please do not spam the chat room when I say spam, that means um, typing a bunch of different words that make no sense or just um, continuously talking about things that are absolutely off topic of what's happening right now. It's okay if you see your friends, talk to them. By all means, do that. Have a great time. But let's try to also be present, be engaged, and um, pay attention to what our celebrity guests have to say. So I just want to go ahead and say that. I know we're not going to have that problem because y'all are amazing and we barely had to ever shut the chat down, but we're not gonna have to do that today because I know we're not ever, we're not even gonna get to that point. Y'all are gonna hold it down and do what you need to do. And that's it. If you have any questions, DC Scores is in here. Direct all of those questions to DC Scores. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So it brings, brings me great, great pleasure to welcome head of the DC United soccer team, the head coach, Ben Olsen, and then three of his amazing players who are part of the team here with us all tonight. I need all y'all to make some noise where you are, throw your hands up, make some snaps. I hear you. Oh, it's so loud. There you go. Show love for the one and only DC United team, Ben Olsen, and three of his wonderful players. And I'm going to introduce y'all to them because these are really young players as well so you will be able to hear from a younger voice on the team mostly when we have players come on though y'all seen bill hamid over the summer y'all seen charlie davies um y'all even saw stacy wilson olympic uh, olympian uh champion uh come through and talk these are all players that have been there done that been around you know been around the block over a minute but these young players are not that far off from your age. And you'll see what, as, a, as we get through the interview, exactly how old they are and how hard they've worked to get where they are on the field at DC United. So first let's talk about our first player who is Griffin Yao, represented DC United at DC Scores Capital Cup Championship last year. So if you were at the Capital Cup middle school game last year, you saw him handing out trophies, stayed there for the entire game to hand out every trophy, even though it was freezing cold. And I was there, I was freezing. It was absolutely extremely cold out there. And by all accounts was really engaged, really possible and really awesome to be around and has been part of the team ever since here at DC Scores. We also have Moses Nyman, he participated in the gear donation event at Aton with a teammate Donovan Pines last year, has been involved with DC Scores. And we also have Kevin Paredes. Um, he hasn't really done anything with DC Scores yet, but will do something in the near future. And I'm really excited to um, hear about them and everything that they are doing currently and will continue to do. Um, he, you play FIFA, Kevin? What I hear? Yes, ma'am. I do play FIFA. You really good? Yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty okay, decent. Okay, I, I hear that you, uh, yeah, somebody said that you're really, really good at FIFA. We'll get into that a little bit later, but <laughs> I want to thank all y'all first. And we also have, last but not least, the one and only Ben Olsen, head coach of the DC United soccer team here in the building. If y'all have not seen him on the stage, 
anywhere else. You have definitely seen him on the stage at our DC Scores Youth Poetry Slam. He's been there, handed out trophies, been cheering y'all on in the crowd. He has been a longtime DC Scores supporter and just an amazing soccer player and coach. And we are really, really grateful and thankful to have had him be a supporter and in our DC Scores uh, family for over the years. So thank you, Ben, for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, Griffin. We're going to get into this discussion and talk about a lot of different things. We're, we're really looking forward to um, having this discussion. Ben, you got anything you want to say before we get things started? Just that I love you and I love DC scores. And I uh, want to start off by thanking you guys for uh, your continued commitment before we get to, you know, answering questions. And uh, we at DC United uh, continue to be in awe and impressed at what you guys are doing uh, in the community with uh, these young boys and girls and uh, with the poetry slams and uh, probably more importantly, uh, supporting them in school. So uh, it's great to be here. Thank you. We got some fun guests today. Uh, I'm excited. Are, I'm really they're, excited. They're, they're special. These three are special. They're good buddies. They're funny and they're young. And as you said, they're, they're not that much older than a lot of you that are on this call. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a neat dynamic and, and one that you said uh, perfectly is not, uh, is a little bit rare. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, it is rare. When I was um, looking at their bios, I'm like, wow, these are like kids, but they're not kids. Like they're playing against pros, which is really awesome. And it's really dope. So I'm, I'm actually, let's go ahead and start with that. I want to hear from our players and we, and each of y'all can go one at a time, just how old you are first and foremost, let's put that out there. And what has your journey been like from playing as a youth and um, coming up and playing competitively in different leagues and now actually playing professionally at DC United? Um, at, just so each of y'all, we'll start with Griffin. What's your age and how's it been so far? What's up guys? I am 17 years old and it has it's honestly been an absolute blessing so far just everything that has happened and you know the opportunity to even be in the position i'm in with dc united uh it's been it's been awesome but i started off with a team in um northern virginia sya it was kind of just like a, a club team super small and then after that i played from probably I would say like four to 12 years old. And then when I was like 12, 13, I moved to my first academy team in Virginia, which was VDA. And I played there for about a year. And Ryan Martin, who was the head of the academy at DC United, uh, saw me play and recruited me for the following year. So I was at DC United, probably I'd say 14, 15, 14, 15 is how old I was. And I was there for probably two years. And then at the end of my second year is when they signed me. Wow, that's pretty awesome. That's what's up. You said 17 years old. Y'all hear yes. that y'all, 17 years old. How about you, Moses? Hi everyone. Um, my name is Moses Nyman and I'm 16 years old. Well, my soccer, my soccer journey has been pretty interesting and really, really great for me. Um, overall, it's been a blessing just to be on DC United. Uh, when I was um, about 11 years old, I played a little bit of high, I mean, middle school soccer and just for a year. And I joined DC United right after that, not too long ago. And um, I was there, I have been at DC United for about five to six years. After my fifth year is when um, I got signed to DC United. It was also um, Ryan Martin, who was the academy director at the time. Interesting. Interesting. So you played for the DC Academy, DC United Academy team for five yes. years and then straight from there got signed to DC United. That is crazy. Yes. Wow. And Kevin, what about you? What's up, guys? I'm also 17 years old, and I joined the academy when I was, I want to say, 13. And our assistant coach, Nolan Sheldon, is actually the one that recruited me from Loudoun Soccer. Um, and, yeah, it's been grateful that I get to play with these boys and um, the whole team every day. And, um, yeah, it's been long, uh, but also I keep my head up, stay positive, and 
um, thankful for everyone that helped me through this journey. That's awesome. So, and even one of y'all can ask, answer at once, um, no, no particular order, but I guess like for the kids that are out here, you know, we have a lot of young aspiring soccer players that are in this room right now. What type of hard work did it take for you as through your journey? Like what did you have to do consistently? What kept, kept you motivated to, to work as hard as you had to work? And what did that look like in order for you to get where you got? Get to I think, where I think honestly for me, the first thing that pops into my head was just like my love and my passion for the game. And I think, like you said right there, it's going to take to get where we are a ton of work, uh, an amount of work that, you know, you can't even imagine. But along the way, I was kind of enjoying it and I was super happy the whole time. So it made the work a lot easier to do because, you know, I wanted to do it almost. And, you know, that was kind of my drive. That's awesome. Go ahead, Moses. Uh, for me, it was, it was, it was a hard work, but at, at the time, it was something I wanted to do, like Griff said. And it seems like I had to do it because I love doing it. But more importantly, it was for those who are around me, like family members and them. They were going out of their way just to get me to where I am. So they were my um, motivation, especially my mom. She's like, one of the best person in the world for me, or probably the, the best person. She would sleep in the car, in the cold and everything. And I, I'm just so happy that she did all that and continued to do it for me. It's almost like um, great motivation for me that just keeps driving me. That's beautiful. So what I'm hearing is like hard work, surrounding yourself with people that support your dream. Because a lot of times, you know, not everyone's going to support your dream and you have to make sure that you keep your circle with positive energy. So that's awesome. Hard work, supporters. What else you got, Kevin? Yeah, I, I would want to touch a little bit on Moses said. Um, my family sacrificed everything for me to continue on to this journey. Um, if it wasn't for them and the love and support I had from everyone around me, I don't think I would be in this position where I am today. Um, also what Griffin said about the love. I, ever since I, I picked up a ball, I enjoyed the sport. Um, every day, I would play with friends, family, and I always had a joy to play for, uh, soccer. So to continue to doing that for uh, my career is, means everything for myself, for my family, and my, my name. Interesting. That's what's up. That's what's up. Family matters. So, Ben, I know you're, you're not on camera, but I know you're going to poke back out. I, I see you coming. And there you are. Yes, you're here. What's up? So this question is for you. I know, so everyone's playing, everyone's on the team. We have an amazing coach and we're in very strange times right now. Um, the soccer league um, with everything going on in the world, especially with COVID, it's kind of halted the flow of the season. I guess my question for you, Ben, as a coach, what would you think, what would you say is the most, has been the most challenging part of coaching this team during the times of COVID in 2020? That's a, it's a very good question. Uh, I get it a lot. And it's, the answer is kind of changing because we're still in this a strange year. Uh, uh, you know, whether it's, we're not playing in front of fans. We, we travel different. Um, the scheduling of the season and the rhythm of the season is very, very uh, uh, strange and, and, and not a normal one. Um, but overall, the, the big difference, you know, that, that's all stuff that we're used to changing as athletes and, and you have to adapt, right? Things don't always go your way and adapting is part of life and uh, part of professional sports. What is a little bit different this year is uh, the emotional levels that I think everyone's dealing with. Uh, professional sports, uh, boys and girls, is a very emotional up and down. You win, you're excited, you lose, you're upset. And uh, it is, a, is a, a, again, a emotional, it takes a, an, it's an emotional journey. But on top of that, you have some other things going on in life that add to uh, that emotion and, and goes on top of it. And, and part of that is 
uh, is COVID and staying, staying at home and wearing masks and this new reality of life uh, that everyone's going to respond to differently. You also have um, uh, a, a lot of things that are going on in the community with, with social injustice mm -hmm. and uh, another layer of emotional toll on, uh, on players. And some players are, are, are uh, that toll is greater than, than, mm -hmm. than others, but it's still another layer of the intensity and the um, complexity of the year. So I guess my, my, my answer would be that it is, uh, you know, the, the, I keep saying the word emotion, being uh, connected to your players uh, and looking at them maybe on a different level than just soccer players and mm -hmm. maybe adding, thinking about them as humans more than I would on an average year. I know that sounds terrible, yeah. Uh, but when you get into the season, it, it, you're, you're thinking about wins and, and losses and how you go about that. But this year, there's a there's a different element. And I think you have to uh, man manage and, and manage emotional levels uh, more than I would in past years. Absolutely. That that's that's you hit it right there, like dealing with emotions and trying to draw that connection. I think a lot of coaches that are in this chat as well with their team can probably really relate to you. There's a lot of things out that are layering, layering, not just the sport, um, but everything that's going on outside of it. Go ahead. Sure. And, and no, and I didn't mean to just say that we're, I'm the only one in sports dealing with this, right? You're dealing with it and mm -hmm. uh, teachers are dealing with it. And across the board in society, everyone's dealing with those extra layers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, yeah, it's certainly a, a new thing for me. And, uh, I'm not sure I'm doing a good job of it, but I'm doing my best. I hear you. I hear you. And that kind of draws me to my next question, because in a lot of in a lot of ways, our jobs, if we like our jobs, right, um, that's somewhat of an outlet for us. But now I feel like when we are showing up to work, the things that are happening in the world, the civil rights movement that's happening in the world, the the pandemic that's happening in the world is so, uh, some way inevitable for it to trickle down into our work life now. So with that being said, I, I'm understanding even more now the importance of having an outlet outside of even just showing up to work and showing up and being there for um, your team and how you have to really lean on other hobbies, other outlets. And so that's why I feel with DC scores, not just having the soccer component, but having the writing component, having some type of art component for the kids to be able to express themselves in a different way has been really healthy and important, especially during this time. And Ben, I know you are an artist and are an amazing painter, seen some of your work. How, how important has it been for you to have different outlets, whether that's been painting or any other hobbies during this time? It's been more important uh than ever in my entire life, Jerry. Uh, and uh, I, I've also, because of COVID, there was uh, an opportunity for me to, for those three months where I was uh, stuck at home or, uh, you know, I couldn't go into the office and work was taken away from me. I almost needed that outlet even more. And I had time to do that. So it was a really fruitful and productive period for me as a creative. Uh, it, because I had, I was lucky enough to have a studio that I could go to by myself, uh, kind of lock myself in there and not communicate to anyone. And uh, I, I had extra hours uh, to, to work on, 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 on being a better painter. And I think it's important to, uh, you know, even though the, the, these, these uh, young men all play uh, soccer all the time, but if you ask Kevin, they all have hobbies. Right? Kevin plays FIFA and he's constantly trying to get better at that. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of our players have other outlets that are, are, it's very, very, very healthy to have these other outlets. And I encourage everyone to try as many things as possible when you're a young kid and uh, experiment with the arts, uh, music, sports, uh, reading, and, and science. Try to find that love because what these three um, young men said is, they fell in love with this game and this soccer ball and see what it, 
you know, where it, where it's taken them to play professional soccer. Yes, they put a lot of practice in. Yes, they had support, uh, and they were also very, very gifted, but they fell in love. And some of you fall in love with soccer. Some of you fall in love with poetry. Uh, some of you uh, are still looking for that thing that you really love. So keep searching and, and find that because uh, I think it's an important thing, it, not only as a young kid, but throughout your life, I'm an adult and I'm still looking for outlets. Oh, wow. That's powerful. That is so powerful. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it, it, this has been a time, uh, me being in the creative community, um, that people have really been doing a lot of self-reflection, trying to find new hobbies, new outlets. And this has been a great time to utilize that um, extra time that you're given that who knows if and when the world opens back up, you might not have that time anymore to really explore and, and do self-reflection and be like, you know, am I only interested in soccer? Maybe I'm interested in this and maybe I'm interested in that. And the one thing that Ben did touch on that the other beautiful young players talked about is that they found something that they love. And when you love something, showing up and working hard for it doesn't feel like work at all. Go ahead, Ben. I was just going to say, watching TV, even though you love watching television all day long, you know, there's good hobbies and bad hobbies. And, or there's, health, there's, there's healthy outlets and healthy hobbies, too. So just keep that in mind as well uh, uh, as you're searching uh, for, for, for things to, to fall in love with. That's awesome. So Griffin, Moses, Kevin, I, I kind of know Kevin's a little FIFA star over here, but if you have other hobbies, I would love to hear about them. But what other things do you do outside of soccer when you're not on the field and you just have free time? What, what, how do you, um, what other hobbies do you do that are healthy? I, mean, I know y'all do healthy hobbies. So what, what else y'all do? I mean, honestly, I don't even know if it's a hobby. It's, and it's, it's definitely healthy, but school, and I know that they can both relate on that. It's just that takes up a majority of my time, honestly, because without being in a classroom, it's really hard to kind of grasp some of the topics. So I have to spend a lot more time, you know, really making sure that I have, you know, all the information down. So I would say school for sure. And then I'm, I'm on the same as Kevin. I play I play uh, Call of Duty with Kevin. I play FIFA with Kevin. We're on, we're on video games all the time. So... All right, FIFA. I, I knew y'all were going to say FIFA. I already knew. Go ahead, Moses. What's up? For me, it's, it's similar to Griff. Uh, it has to do with school as well. But out of that, I also like doing drawing. Maybe not Maybe not painting. I'm not very good at painting. I tr um, I'm still trying with, uh, with the quarantine situation. I started uh, painting again to see what, what it's going to um, do for me or where it's going to take me. And I think, um, I think I'm progressing. But I also do play FIFA as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charity, Charity, we had a, uh, one of the assignments when we were, you know, stuck in our homes or COVID for the, the, the team on a Zoom call was uh, to kind of challenge them to find a new outlet right mm -hmm. uh and we got you know each player and everybody came back with some different ones uh moses i think yours was painting right yours was painting i think you painted something yeah uh, Ke kevin's yours was uh you, you were cutting hair right you were yeah was that right yeah you, cutting hair. A, you, you sure. probably made a few people gave a few people some bad haircuts <laughs> <laughs> never never Griffin, what did you do? Did you did you come up with anything? Uh, I think mine was the exact same. I think it was school because I remember during school. quarantine I was grinding. I was grinding homework. You were busy, but some some guys, some players started cooking. Uh, you know, guys were doing all different types of things to uh, kind of just again do something. You know, as, as much as it was, uh, it hampered what we could do in life. It's everything is an opportunity, guys. A any type of a mishap or something doesn't go your way you have to change it and you have to have your mentality is this is an opportunity it's either an opportunity for you to grow maybe if you can't do something it's an opportunity for you to do something else mm -hmm. um and it's just all about growing and, yeah. and doing more things and challenging yourself 
is a, is, is a very healthy thing. Beautiful. Well said about growing and having that growth mindset, switching your mindset. It's not like, well, I can't do this. I can't do this. It's I can, I can do this if I try this, or maybe if I try to go this route, I can, I can maybe find a new interest. So always having an open mind during this time, I think is really important. And as you can see, you know, everybody has been in COVID. I think sometimes you could feel a little bit isolated because you're home and you don't see what's going on, but everyone's impacted and everyone's is trying to find new hobbies, new ways to stay mentally stimulated. And it's really great that y'all were able to share that with our kids because I think that's super, super important. Um, all right, so let's talk about some of the things that are happening in the world. And I'll start with Ben, where this one right now. So what has it been like, what has it been like for you as a coach during this time to see players use their platforms to speak out about social justice matters um, and seeing it, how it's impacted the, the whole sport itself in other sports? How's that been for you as a coach? Are you on mute, Ben? It, it has been, uh, it has been inspiring uh, and I have been uh, 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 inspiring is the word that keeps coming up uh, in my brain. Uh, I've, I've seen players in, in new lights. I've seen them, uh, some of them become uh, uh, more mature and uh, men become become men in front of my eyes in how they uh, address some of these issues and respond to them uh, and it has been um, it, it's been one of the most important times of, of my career to to try to 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 try to listen and and grow myself with some of the issues that I, I thought I had a better grasp of but I really didn't uh, it's been a, a interesting time f for me selfishly to to listen and uh, to support, not necessarily selfishly, uh, but to, yep. to support some of uh, our players that are, are uh, more affected emotionally mm -hmm. during the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in interesting to see our club's response, right? So there's, there's this individual response, there's the coaching responsibility and uh, there's this supporting and learning and then there's also DC United as a brand and who we are and I, I am part of this brand I've been a part of this brand for uh, 20 years and and to make sure that we stand for the right things and we're supporting the, the right causes in in our minds and um, so it, it's been it, it's been a remarkable time in, in that way and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our players uh, I could speak to players across the the country and, and uh, the, how impactful they've been. Uh, the NBA, uh, I think, has been, uh, if I take them as an example, super, super uh, effective and, and thought out. With the signage, of course, that in some ways is the easy part. But them pushing and now pushing for that next level of changing, uh, making real change with legislation uh, and just not stopping at some of the things that have been we we all see, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and making sure that this uh, some of this stuff has real lasting change as we move forward as the uh, as time goes on. But yeah, it's been it's been tricky though. It, I'm not going to lie, and, and it's been a tricky time to uh, to manage. Uh, we talked about that backdrop earlier. Uh, it has ha added another layer to it, but yeah. it's a very unfamiliar layer. Uh, for for a white coach mm -hmm. to 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 deal with, so I've done a, I think a lot of growing in it and learning, and uh, I, I think I'm I'm better for it. But I also understand my growth has to continue, and I've got to be part of the part of the change. Wow, wow, wow! Super well said, super super well said. I remember we were talking before in one of our interviews. It was me, you, I think Bill Hamid. Charlie Davies and another person. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Who? Someone else. I can't remember. But I remember Rodney um, Wallace. Rodney Wallace. Rodney Wallace. Yes, Rodney yeah. Wallace. Um, and and you were talking about how you. And this was early. This was like right 
when I think right before like right around time COVID hit, I think. And then everything was like blew up with the George Floyd. Yeah. And um, and when we had our conversation, you really um, take it, not only being in there and and speaking and speaking your truth, but also like really taking a step back and, and soaking in and learning. And I think that's really been something that's important for everybody, not just you as a coach who is white and your players, so your, some of the players that you have that are black or any anybody, I think this whole experience has been a very big learning um, opportunity for every single body. I, I don't know everything. I'm still learning every day. So um, it, it was very brave of you to, to speak out and say that you don't know everything. Because I think a lot of times, sometimes we do think we know everything. And, you, and, and actually putting you know, your money where your mouth is and making the work happen. Because DC United, I've seen you as a coach and uh, how you've been moving and seeing how the league and the club has been moving um specifically dc united um and they have not wavered on the stance that they've taken which has been really meaningful so yeah super proud of y'all so kevin moses griffin piggybacking off of what ben and i were just now talking about how's it feel as players right now playing during this time playing with everything that's going on with all of the political stuff happening and um and also players maybe on your team or players that are part of the league using their platform to speak out about issues that are happening in the world. Yeah, for myself, I would say it's eye-opening. Um, being one of the younger guys on the team, seeing what other players are dealing with or other people are dealing with is, for me, is a learning experience because I also don't know everything. And um, I try my best to you know, grasp what others are saying and learn from them and try to make change as well you know it, it doesn't it doesn't matter your age or where you come from it just matters the effect that you can put on other people mm -hmm. and for myself I can I have a platform as well to, for younger people and if if I can change one person that would mean a lot to myself and the world so that's that's my view on right now love what she said doesn't matter your age or where you come from you can still make an impact. That is that is so meaningful. Y'all hear that, kids? I don't care how old you are. No matter how old you are or where you're from, you can still make change out here. What about you, Moses or Griffin? Either yeah, for, for me, it was, I mean, first off, I just feel like super honored and super thankful to be able to, you know, represent that cause on the platform that we have, you know, whether it was the bubble, you know, taking the knee during uh, the national anthem and, you know, wearing those shirts around and, you know, each team kind of put their own spin on it. But I just thought it was really great. Also, how Ben said about the NBA and all the other leagues, I feel really, you know, thankful that I'm in a position with the MLS to be able to do that. And uh, also, it's just been a learning experience for me, just like how, how everyone has said, you know, I was in a spot where maybe I thought I did not know everything, but I knew, you know, enough, but you know, that was, I was completely wrong. And this, everything that has happened has really, you know, opened my eyes to a lot more. And it's been, it's been eye opening, honestly, is the word that I think of. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. What about you, Moses? For me, um, what Kevin said was very important. The fact that we, we are, uh, we're not too young to impact the world. I mean, it's very easy at times like this for us to say, um, I'm 16 years old or 17 years old. It hasn't really affected me yet, and I could just wait it out. But doing that, you're really going to be um, doing nothing that's going to positively impact your environment and even people around you. And you have the platform to do it, like uh, DC United, being the player at DC United is a very huge honor and a very big platform that you can use positively to impact other people. And I think uh, knowing them both and myself, I think we, we haven't really done much, but I think we're, we're trying to impact uh, other people around the world using this platform, but just listening to the adults on the on the team and as they as they were um, sharing their point of view about the whole situation, it was just very uh, important for us to for for me personally to hear their point of view and try to understand and even try to see how how best 
I can do um, better to impact other people, even if it's around me, just people who I know that I can help, I would try to help them in times like this. That's awesome. Y'all are just such great young men. Y'all are so positive and just amazing. That is, ah, I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all, that is so meaningful and, and y'all are extremely mature and ahead of your time because yes, right now y'all are young, probably still living with mom and pops, you know, so it doesn't, it hasn't really directly hit you because you're not really out in these streets like that, but it's very smart to think ahead because eventually you're going to grow up. You're going to have to be on the forefront of these issues. The issues are going to eventually directly impact you. So listening to older older folks, hearing different point of views and soaking that in is super, super meaningful and important. So thanks for sharing that because I hope the kids that are listening are hearing that and are, you know, latching on to that advice. Um, so uh, let's go back to you, Ben, real quick. And we have a couple more questions and I'm gonna open it up to our Q&A from the kids who've been waiting so patiently. So Ben, you are a coach. You manage players, you manage staff, and then you go home and you manage your home life. You have wonderful kids. How has it been <laughs> being a coach, balancing being a father? I know there's e-learning going on, school, all that stuff. How have you managed during this time to kind of find some type of balance right now? And I'm asking because I know we have some coaches in the building who are and who are also possibly parents. Are, and I know you probably don't even have the answer. I see your face right now. <laughs> you're muted, Ben. You're muted. I am. Uh, I am certainly still trying to figure out that that balance. And um, you know, I, I do. Uh, you know, off out of out of work. Um, you know, I I have three children. Uh, and my wife is teaching as well. So my house during the day is just one big Zoom call. So I spend most of my free time trying to get Verizon to get us the right internet service to, to deal with four Zoom calls at one time. Uh, she teaches yoga at a high school. Um, so she's doing yoga on the fourth floor and the kids are the third floor and the kids are all on their Zoom chats. So it's, uh, again, no different probably than, than a lot of households right now. And uh, still figuring out this new world we're in. Uh, it, it's a, uh, we're just, we're, we're, we're figuring it out. We're, we're just adapting and um, we're not sure how we're doing right now. We know this is going to continue mm -hmm. uh, and, and that we, a lot of it's trial and error. Uh, as a coach in, in our sport, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm not as good a father or husband as I should be because sometimes my emotion uh, I'm giving so much emotion to the other 30, uh, 30 kids that I have on the field mm -hmm. and uh, the results that sometimes I shortchange my kids and, uh, uh, and my wife. I'm shortchanging my son who's locked out of the car right now. Oh, um, poor baby. So come on in. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, and, and, you know, seasons, each season's a little different, you know, but if you're losing a little bit, uh, you know, that takes its toll and, and you have to be conscious of it. You have to make sure that uh, the, the family is still the priority and, and you're doing what you can for your kids to grow up in, in, the, in the right mold and supporting your wife and uh, being as good a husband as possible. But it's hard. It's hard as everybody out here with, with work knows. Uh, balancing life right now is, uh, it, again, we talk about those layers. It's hard enough to balance life as is with work and family and kids and school. And then here come new layers. Here comes COVID. Here comes, uh, right. you know, your, your kids are at home all day long and uh, no, no extracurricular activities. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I got no advice. Yeah. <laughs> I got, just, long, long story short, I got no advice. And if anybody <laughs> has any, bring it my way, please. Give me, give me, uh, give me some advice. That's what's up. Hey, coaches out there, drop some advice for uh, Ben in the chat if you got it. We'll, we'll definitely. Bring it my way. Yeah, we'll definitely slide it that way. You know what I, I do do to keep keep saying is, I, I again, I, you know I'm a creative, and so painting does help, and that outlet does help, uh, and I also exercise. I, you know, I really believe in uh, taking care of your body. I eat right, and I exercise as much as possible, nice. and uh, that, that, that helps me uh, quite a bit to stay balanced. That's what's up. Awesome. Cool. Y'all hear that? He has 
<laughs> Minimal advice. Okay. Actually, you just say something smart. You know, just, you said something very important. Like, just staying, I think, event, like, just understanding that you have no control. Because I think at the beginning, a lot of folks were preparing for things to go back to normal. Just finally understanding that there's really no set plan and just to be open to change. You know, I think that's the best thing that you, you just said, honestly. I kind of defined it a little different, but that, that's what and, I got. And, right, and, be, and, and letting yourself, and I think you said this, I think, I, you know, I'm, I'm on Instagram now and I follow you and I think, you know, um, you said something like, forgive yourself, you know, we're not gonna get this right. And, and it's gonna, you know, the household's gonna be a little chaotic and you're gonna screw some things up with kids and wife and, that, that that is a normal thing and, and to uh, sometimes you know understand that we're in a new environment and these transitions uh, are, are going to take its toll and it, it we're not going to be perfect with it right be gentle with yourself yes there you go that's be what it was with yourself absolutely that's I, I told my coaches yesterday that in the coach training like yo be gentle with yourself we 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 know we're asking you to do a lot but we also understand this is the circumstances that we're, these are the circumstances that we're dealing with. So be very gentle. All right, I wanna get some of these questions from the kids out the way. And then I have one question I'm gonna close on, which I think is super meaningful and powerful. But we have a question from Leo. We have a few questions. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to either give y'all the opportunity to each answer them quickly or one at it or one each question, y'all. If, if one of the questions is really burning and you're like, wow, I really wanna answer that, let me know, okay? So my apologies if I pronounce this incorrectly, but I think the name is Leo. Leo has asked, who was your favorite player before you played at on DC United? So I guess if you had a player that was different before, who was it? Or if you've already just always had the same favorite player, who was that? I think y'all 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 can answer that for real. Is this uh, a player from DC United that played on DC United? Her. Or just That's overall a, favorite player? It's very vague, Moses. I don't know. Who is your favorite player? Oh. For, yes, there you go. Come on. There you go. Thank you. What, what was it? <laughs> 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 if, if it's a player that played on DC United, um, I grew up watching um, Marcelo Sarvas. I didn't really see uh, Ben play, but I watched Marcelo Chavez played, and he was very, very good at what he does or what he did. Um, he was very hardworking, and he was more like an engine, you know, doing everything. And I love that about him. Awesome. Outside of DC United, do you have a favorite player? Uh, that would be Kevin De Bruyne. Y'all heard that, Kevin City. I can't pronounce it, but Kevin, <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne. De Bruyne, y'all got that, Kevin. All right. Next, uh, Griffin, how about you? I think DC, it would be Jaime Moreno. Jaime Moreno. And then uh, a, sh uh, a close tie to Ben Olsen, though. He's okay. seen not far behind. All right, Ben. And then uh, right now, probably, I mean, my favorite player is always changing, to be honest. But right now, probably Neymar. Neymar, Neymar. Okay, I like Neymar. He got cool hair. That's what's up. Cool, cool. All right, what about you, Kevin? Yeah, I actually had a couple. Um, growing up, I like watching Christian Gomez, Kofi Apare, and then, you know, of course, Ben. Ben was a little feisty guy as well. So I relate to him a lot. And um, for overall, it's definitely Messi. Messi's my favorite soccer player. There you go. I love it. All right, so let's go on to another question. Being so young, has any of your teammates taken you under their wings? If so, who? There has Ashley. been. You go. Go ahead, Griff. Fine. All right, I'll go. So first off, honestly, uh, Paul from day one. I mean, maybe just because we're kind of both in that winger spot and we both kind of have experience uh, – I mean, obviously not with the men's national team yet, but I grew up playing with the youth national team. So we were able to relate on that topic. And he's always honestly just been a super, super nice, nice person, you know, always giving me advice and always when I'm down, giving me motivation and, you know, super, super supportive. So I'd say, I'd say Paul for sure. Nice. 
Anyone, anyone else? For me, there has been like multiple players who I've taken advice from and they have also treated me as one of their um, one of their teammates that they should uh, show the ropes to. Um, one would be uh, Earl, Earl Edwards. He, uh, he's very wise in what he says and I listen to everything he says. Um, also, uh, Fisher O'Neill, very, very nice guy. Um, he's always telling me, um, telling me what his, his experience was and what what are some of the mistakes he made and what are some of the good things he did just showing me the right the right way and um also russ i don't really talk to him a lot but i talk to him outside of soccer as well nice nice how about you kevin yeah for me uh the three people that really uh got me comfortable and uh, used to the team was bill hamid very very great person um, outside of soccer, he's great, and with soccer, he's also wise. Uh, Earl as well, and Fish, O'Neill Fisher as well. Those, those three, probably the, the three that I can you know talk to day to day basis about anything outside of soccer. Um, and yeah, they they always look out for me, which is great. Awesome, that's what's up. I recently started talking to Paul, and he's a very very wise guy too. So you got a lot of wise. Old heads on your team. That's good. That's good. Listen to the old heads. They, the OGs know what's up. So Ben, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this question with you. This last final question, um, and I'll open up the floor for y'all to give kids some not last motivational words. But um, what advice would you give to our poet athletes who have not been able to play with their teams during COVID and are trying to stay fit and focused on their home at, at their home on their own? Well, um, I, I think it's fortunately uh, you guys are, are, are uh, teaching uh, creativity uh, on a daily basis, and whether it's writing and, and the arts, and I think you almost have to have to channel that uh, and bring that home with you, and get creative on how to uh, break a sweat or run or kick the ball against a wall. Um, you know, you, you just got to, the field sometimes are, I think, still open, you know, mm -hmm. I still think there's opportunity to, for you to uh, play uh, on, on an individual uh, basis. And that's setting up and, and making sure you're juggling and you're getting as many touches on the ball as you can. Uh, and, and again, staying fit, running around and making sure your heart rate's high. So when uh, the those teams do get back and the games get moving uh you, that you you've done enough work uh that you didn't go backwards uh, you you it's certainly no substitute for playing you know our players and, and griff and these guys uh moses and kevin these guys are professional athletes and during that covid period uh, or the covid period where they were you know a little bit more stuck in their homes uh they were doing stuff with their brothers and sisters. They were out in the in the garage. They were in the uh, uh, kicking it against their front stoop, uh, in their driveway. They were getting creative. If you have a backyard or if you have an alley, uh, mm -hmm. if there's a there's a abandoned wall garage, go kick it against it. You can do it. You just got to get creative and make sure you're touching that ball as much as possible. Um, and then you know you can always for for exercise. There's, you don't need a gym. You don't need a team to exercise. You, you know, you guys know push-ups. You know jumping jacks. You know running, a, running around the block five times. Time yourself. Find an old stopwatch. Uh, get creative. I used to do it when I was young uh, all the time. When I would, uh, I'd go up to a field by myself, and I'd, I'd entertain myself for hours, or, or I'd go in the alley and hit against the wall. Uh, uh, so, and it doesn't have to just be soccer. There's, there's basketball hoops up there. You can go, go shoot hoops. Uh, you can uh, play, play other sports as well, tennis. Uh, so, just, you know, do it in a safe way. But, uh, you know, you can get creative. It'll be here before you know it. I, I know you guys miss it, but it, it'll be back. And 
we'll, we'll get back to some type of normalcy soon. So hang in there. I love it. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Stay right. ready. Get creative and figure out how you can do that by just going out and looking around, exploring your neighborhood, and figuring out how you can do that. Um, ben and my friends, my friends, my teammates, we have a couple poets that want to share some poems for y'all. Is that okay? Is that yeah. cool? Still a couple poems. So what we do, we like to snap it up. Can I see some snapping fingers real quick? Yes. We even like to do what we call spirit fingers. Let me see the spirit fingers real quick. Go ahead, Shelby. Yes. Y'all are great. Okay. So we're going to show love to our poets that are coming to the stage by doing those things. So first up, I think we have Zaria on deck that's going to come and do a quick poem for you. So Zaria, wherever you're at, go ahead and unmute yourself. Show you. Oh, what's up, Zaria? Hey. Hi. See all the love and support. <laughs> yes. All right, Zaria, the floor is yours. Tell them your name, your age, and do your thing. Um, hi, my name is Zaria. I'm 18. I'm a DC Scores alum. Um, Morgan State, class of 2024. And yeah, I got a poem. Let's go. We the people, in order to have a more perfect union, must use our voice. In the United States, our right to speak is protected. Our right to freely speak is the first thing that is mentioned. Yet we, the people, have gone silent. We don't speak up when we see violence. We, the people, don't speak up. When our own people are dying, we don't speak up. So I'm here to give everyone a little reminder that we have a voice and we are loud. Louder than the bigotry we see on TV. Louder than the sound of gunshots riddled within our PTSD memories. Louder than the injustices happening on our streets every day. But for some reason, we don't know this. And we allow our poets to take the stand and ruin the voices of every woman and man that have taken a ban against his unnecessary dance and condemn his crude remarks that shape our nation to resemble hatred. We, the people, are even louder than him. We have a voice that can extend for continents and a scream that you can hear for centuries. We just have to use it instead of ignore it because our voice was once ignored and we fought to not be ignored. So for your ancestors' life, please speak up. Don't let them die in vain. Use your voice to speak up on pain to create peace. Because we, the people, have a voice. And in order to make a more perfect union, we must use it. Thank you. Thank you, Zion! <laughs> we, the people, let's go! Yeah. Thank you. I'll see you at the workshop. Bye. Okay, I think, do we have time for one more DC scores? Just one more? I'm waiting for DC scores to say something. DC scores. We have time for one more. Both more. Both. Y'all cool? Just two more. Y'all good? Two more? Thank y'all. Y'all snap it up. Come on. Let me see your snap. I'd like to see y'all snap. I love seeing DC United players and coaches snap. This is beautiful. Yeah, put a little shimmy to it, man. All right. Who's next? Who we got coming up? I think we have, is Janina in here? I don't know. Jonah Lee. We got Jonah Lee coming up next, y'all. coming to the virtual stage sooner or later. What's up, Jonah Lee? Let's snap it up. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Where you at? Okay, what's up? Okay, let them know your name, how old you are with school. Hi, My name is Jonah Lee, and I'll be performing a poem called Ode to My Hair. <laughs> Ode to my hair, to the defiance of gravity as it sticks straight up. Hair that does not flow down, but allows the wind to flow through it. Mm. Ode to my hair, with roots connecting me to the tree of my African ancestry. Ode to my hair, that can be whatever it wants to be. Coily or straight, wavy or braided too. Ode to my hair that has been on a long journey of self-discovery. And yes, you have. Thank you, John Lee. Oh my God. You worked on that poem too, girl. Okay, bye. they just dip out. Bye. Okay, see ya. Jeez. Say bye to me. They just gone. All right. And we have one more. Yes, Greta. Yes, ode to hair. Y'all see that little emoji? That's the hair emoji. All right, DC scores, do we have one? And we have, last but not least, Give it up for my girl, Yanina. Name, school, let's get into it. You got it. 
Oh, and age. Name, age, school. Got it, got it. Um, hi, I'm Yanina. I attend Murray School. I'm 16. What else am I missing now? Is that it? 16, Murray, your name. Poem. Poem, okay, poem, I got y'all. So in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, any viewers out there that are of Latino descent or Hispanic, shout out to y'all. So, hey, I see you, Kevin. <laughs> um, I celebrated yesterday. I'm a proud, proud Salvadorian. So um, this is for you guys. So, yeah. Español. Español, uno de los idiomas más universal. El idioma que me ayuda a comunicarme con la gente de 33 países. ¿Pero por qué tanto odio hacia el español? Todo suena más poderoso con el español. Hasta los regaños de nuestros parientes. Y de tu madre lavas los trastes. O las críticas de las tías. ¿Y cuando vas a adelgazar, hija? Son más dolorosos que mil disparos al corazón. You hear that spice in Spanish? That spice that took away from my tribe's language. Español. Uno de los idiomas más universal que ni gente ni siquiera querían hablar. Spaniards, yes, you, the colonizers of my lovely country. You hate me for the way I speak your language, but strip me from my native tongue. And I better not try to speak in America because they'll tell me to speak English. But they forget that their colonizers also strip this country from their native tongues. You see, I get to thinking at how you embarked onto a country, managed to discover it, and make up stupid ideologies about our beautiful native women. The ones you seem to have adored for their radiant caramel skin, raped them and committed a deadly sin, ignored their cries to stop, and left them in their own chagrin. And adding on to that, you make us think we have to fix the mix you created. You make me so frustrated, make my India come out, make our little curse words come out. Yes, the ones that hit harder than the chancla my mamita throws, the ones that have made your emotional shell harder, the ones you, Spain, won't accept because we made your language sound way better. Call it a remix. Yo, te continúo hablando en español, even if it damaged our history, aunque my tribe language has vanished, you did not manage to erase the beauty and the built-in strength of my ancestors' skin, and as their kin, we ain't just gonna claim the Spanish. Remember, the tribe's heart lives within, y va a seguir palpitando, sin importar lo que nos dicen. Thank you. Come on, you need now, you gotta bring, Call it a remix. Remix. All right. Thank you, Yanina. And thank okay. Again. Just bye. All right. Um, I hate to do this to y'all. We have one last poet. Just one, I promise. One more. That's y'all good? Thumbs up. Can bring I it, bring it. Yes. Bring it. All right. Uno mas poetess. I'm just gonna stop. All right, one more poet coming up. We have Miriam coming to the stage. What's up, Miriam? Coming through. Let them know your name. I already said your name. Your age and your school. Go ahead. Go for it. Um, I'm 12, and I go to Lucky Education Center. And I don't really have a title for my poem, so. No yeah. title. Let's go. <laughs> coming down the court, I make a layup. Then I miss. Squidward running his mouth. Sandy giving me the stinker. But Mr. Krabs, Mr. Krabs yelling at me as if he not making money no more. As if I don't know how to make Krabby Patties anymore. As if Squidward quit his job. He told me what I would be fired, but I laughed because I didn't believe it. But then he switched me off for another. Was she better than me? Nah, of course not. He was just mad at me. If I flip the script, I never trip. I'm too dripped out for you. Never doubt me because at the end of the day, I know what I wrote. Never disrespect the goat. Bars, okay. Never disrespect the goat. Okay, okay. Thank you, Miriam, for coming. Thanks. All right. All right, y'all. Any last words that you have for our participants before we let y'all go? First of all, thank you for staying and coming and being here. This was so, so awesome and amazing. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be here to talk to our kids. But any last words that you have for them? Any supportive words? Go for it. Yeah, for myself, uh, all three of us have this creative ability to play a sport that we all love. And you guys definitely have your own creativity with your own poets. And stay true to uh, to yourself. And um, from what I heard, this 
that was wonderful from each and every young um, person that just came on and spoke. Um, thankful for you guys, because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing the stuff that we, we can do at the moment and continue with it. Don't give up, never give up. Because what I heard is true potential and true love to what you guys do. So thank you guys. Who's next? Agreed. I just want to first thank you, Charity. Thank you, DC Scores, for having us all on here. It was, you know, I always, like you said, even last year in the winter, you know, there was a reason I was out there because, you know, I love watching you guys play. I love the passion that, that you guys put into the game. It's, it's the same, it's the same face and it's the same passion that I saw in myself and that I saw in these guys back when we were that age. And it's just, it's awesome to see. And also, like Kevin said, Thanks so much for opening my eyes to poetry. Honestly, I wasn't really a, a big poetry guy, but after hearing those three, I'm definitely gonna, gonna look into it a little bit more. Come on through, come on through. Come to the poetry side. We got Ben over here. I mean, Ben, he already, he already been around. He know what's up. But what's up? Go ahead. What you got, Moses? Uh, just wanna say thank you guys for having, having me. Um, when I last uh, went to the program you guys had at the school, I was just uh, so happy to be part of it. The fact that you guys were doing so much, going out of your way just to help others in need, it was very touching for me. And um, thanks to you guys for the poem. They were very inspiring. I just want to say, um, whatever the problem, whatever you're going through, just keep keep going. Like Kevin said, don't give up. Just keep going. Live, love, and laugh. That's all I got. Leave, love, and laugh. Oh, you're so fresh. Ben, any I, last words? I can't beat any. Those are, man, they're so well spoken, huh? I would have never been able to speak. Yes. Uh, they're thoughtful, thoughtful kids. Um, thank you for the poems. I mean, it's amazing stuff, inspiring as usual. Uh, so, um, and, and uh, Charity and uh, everybody at DC Scores, I just want to thank you guys for what you do for. Uh, all the children in the area and also for us and, and we're so proud of you guys uh and to be connected with you guys and, and we're thankful for for what you are doing and uh, i can't wait to see what the future holds with our relationship and uh i love you all i can't wait to can't wait to do this again oh we love you too man you know the love is always there and all you little fifa people i'm gonna see y'all on the the soccer field and and we have some uh, possible like alumni tournaments coming up, so we might be hitting you up to see if y'all can y'all really about that life. But again, thank y'all. If y'all can if y'all can see the chat, you're getting spam now. Good spam, good spam with love. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. So that being said, thank you to all our poets, our coaches for being here. Again, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, Griffin. Um, and that is a wrap. Appreciate y'all. Love, peace, and hair grease. Thank you. Thank you.